a ragged roof, peeling paint, and worn windows. All of it could have been yours for $2.48 million at more than 80,000 over asking. That's what the battered Vancouver bungalow sold for. Daniel Warren didn't sell the shabby shack, but he says it's rare homes here ever go for the listed price or below. In most instances for all realtors in Vancouver, for sure, the norm is right now above. Turns out that sentiment matches new housing numbers. According to the Canadian Real Estate Association, the average price of a home in Vancouver climbed by about 31% compared to the same time last year. So let's have a look. The other runaway market, Toronto. That's where Marie Mansour is trying to help her clients buy, but it's not easy. Prices here are also up by more than 14%. I was kind of hoping it would slow down a little bit for some of the buyers, but um, it's been pretty steady and, and inclining for sure. Some say the soaring costs are a result of low inventory. Others argue, particularly in Vancouver, speculation and foreign investment are to blame. The international flow of real estate, in some sense, people seeing real estate as a place to park cash has really amped up. For months now, there's been calls for the B.C. government to track foreign buyer activity. Today, during the release of its annual budget, the province said it will start this summer. Individuals who purchase property will need to disclose if they are citizens or permanent residents of Canada. And if not a Canadian citizen or permanent resident, home buyers in B.C. will be required to state what country they call home. As for what the government plans to do with the data, well, Lisa, they wouldn't say. All right, Melanie Nagy in Vancouver. Thanks, Mel. We have a link to that report on the soaring cost of buying a home, plus a comparison of home prices year over year, depending on where you live. That is all at ctvnews.ca.